obviously Arsenal fans. Unfortunately, Newcastle beat us a goal to nil on Saturday, people. Now, I've gone, I've cleared my head. I've watched the game again. I've actually gone with my friend and played my friends and played pool and whatnot, people. And really and truly, I know if I'm honest with you guys, obviously we've got a good channel here going on. I appreciate you lot support. We talk about football. We talk about Arsenal. We have a laugh and a joke. We ride the highs and lows together, people. And, you know, as much as it's about me giving you lot my opinions and all of that, it's a two-way street. I consider us family and Ultimately, I'm a fan, in it? When it comes to football, you lot know me. I have a laugh and a joke, but at the end of the day, I try to be balanced in my opinions and be honest with what I see, the good, bad and the ugly, not just Arsenal Football Club. But as you guys know, just about any football that we cover on the platform, big up you lot, you lot are family. I hope you're all doing well and safe. By the way, it's the 3rd of November, new month, new blessings. But that being said, I'm not going to lie, you lot, it's a family. And if you can't talk to your family, you know, who can you speak to? So you lot, you know, give me a bit of, of things. And really, I'm, I don't even know why I'm making this video. I'm being honest with you. It's just my thoughts as a fan, you know, forget all of that balanced stuff just as a fan. Personally, folks, 100%, the first thing I would say, yeah, I'm disappointed in everybody at the club. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. I don't really care what the last four or five games of us have said, whether we've won, lost or drawn. I'm disappointed. First and foremost, as a fan, and this is just me, I, big up to you lot, but this is just me. It's not that I'm not happy about, obviously, when we've won and things like that. But for me as a fan, the real times I felt real pride in an Arsenal shirt and being an Arsenal fan so far this season of recent has been when we, you know, when we got back into the City game, we went 10 men down. Fair enough. Yeah, you can laugh at our Stone scored. He did what he did. But I felt we were Spartans. PSG. On paper, I know there's no Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe, but it's still Paris Saint-Germain. Still got a great manager in Luis Enrique. You lot went out there and did the business. And yeah, people, you know, it hasn't been all doom and gloom. Yes, you need to apply balance and on one hand, park sentiment and talking points off and look at the cold-hearted facts. Mathematically, Arsenal can still fight for the Premier League whatever in the Champions League, League Cup, FA Cup, etc, etc. Do I think we're going to win the Premier League? Me as a fan, I hope to go down wrong, but no, I don't. I don't because I think we make, we still have this ability of making things harder for ourselves. Yes, on paper, points tally, we can still do a thing and I hope we can. And, and again, it's not all doom and gloom. At the end of the day, we need to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off again and win and start winning games quickly if we want to have any hope of being in a conversation, essentially, people. Yes, the, the blow is kind of softened by finally Manchester City have dropped some points against Bournemouth, ironically. Liverpool won, you know, it was City's week last week with Liverpool and Arsenal drawing and City winning. This week, you know, the shoes on Liverpool's foot. For me, I'm disappointed because we're making things harder than it needs to be. You need to be courageous in defeat. Take nothing away from Newcastle. Eddie Howe, all of what they did, they've been in a bit of a poor run of form. They're not really doing what Newcastle was projected to do, but isolated to today, they did what they needed to do. They won their individual and collective battles. They did the main thing of getting three points. They get the clean sheet. It's all gravy from a Newcastle perspective. And if I'm honest with you, I have to big up Newcastle because I'm sure their coaching staff, Eddie Howe, it's their job to want to make Newcastle better and look where they, look at things that there's no need to look at. But if you're honest with yourselves, Eddie Howe and his, and his coaching and technical staff, there's nothing to look at in that Newcastle game from an Arsenal perspective. We cause nothing. Yeah, we might have huffed and puffed call. Nick Pope might have had to collect some crosses. Nick Pop didn't have to do nothing. Big up you lot. I did a watch along with you. Like, at no point did I go, what a save from Nick Pop. You know, Nick Pop should be peppered in front of his goal to the point where match of the day when they're doing their, their analysis, they should be saying, does he get in ahead of uh, of Pickford and talk about those talking points? Ask nothing of Nick Pope. Ask nothing of their back four. Ask nothing of their midfielders. Newcastle, the biggest testament I would give Newcastle is they didn't have to be at their, their maximum today. I'm sure, of course, they went out there, they wanted to win. They didn't have to be at their maximum. They just needed to be competent. They got the goal. And again, everything needs to be better. Everything at this football club needs to be better. Again, mistakes happen. When goals are conceded, things happen. I'm not saying we're amazing. I'm not saying things don't go left. And again, there might be some other factors as to why we're not quite at the at, at the races at the moment. But I'm sorry, we're at, regardless of what Isaac's form might have looked at, even though he's been banging the goals in of late, as we saw against Chelsea, Isaac is one of the biggest and most lethal marksmen in the Premier League. How has he gone unmarked in our box 12 minutes into the game? 
Big up Anthony Gordon as well. Fantastic cross, you know. And even and uh, is that because if you want to get into it, he's made that goal himself. He's he's dispatched it to Longstaff. Longstaff has done something competent for the game and play, played it to Gordon. They've did what they needed to do. Take nothing away from Newcastle. Again, I hate losing. I hate you know. I love winning. No one likes to draw. But at the end of the day, if if we were at our, our maximum and Newcastle were forced to such, you'd have to hold your hands up and say, you know what, great bit of play. They just had to be competent. They got the goal, defended well. Did what their manager asked them to do for us. What's going on in the final third? What's going on in the final third? For Mikel Arteta's perspective, what's going on with the coaching? For me, for the players, what's going on? There's no protagonists out there. I'm not saying we were terrible because, ironically, I actually feel we started great against Newcastle. I don't think it's a game where people dropped clangers and everyone was horrible, but you just weren't good enough. What did you ask of Nick Pope? What do we do in midfield? And some of it has to come down to the gaffer. I love what Arteta is doing, but at the end of the day, this midfield, yeah, it's combative and whatnot, but it's not passing the ball forward and breaking lines and ultimately creating chances. Martinelli, you need to get your head up. Love Martinelli, get your head up. And this ain't getting at any individuals. We're all in this together. Martinelli needs to get your head up. Saliba and Gabriel, has got to be better for that, for that goal. Timber has got to be better. I mean, everybody's got to be better. It's got to be better. We're making things very, very, very hard for ourselves. We can't win them all. But when have we been brilliant this season? Again, we have to chase the illusion of perfection. I'm not knocking the team for when life has thrown us, thrown us curveballs or games haven't gone how we thought and, you know, getting out with a draw, getting out with three points. But at the end of the day, when have we been perfect this season? I think the only times I've felt real pride as an Arsenal fan so far, PSG in the Champions League, as I said earlier, Manchester City when everything happened, you know, Aston Villa, horrible for a first half, did what you needed to do in the second. Spurs, fair, fair. They were there for the, you know, as much as I want to sit here and banter Spurs and do all of that sort of stuff, Spurs were there for the taking. Competent job, got out of there. Wolves, we only really crying about needing more goals, did what we needed to do. I've alluded to Aston Villa. Manchester City, we know what happened. Liverpool was, a, again, over 90 minutes. There's some positives, there's some negatives. Yes, I believe personally, we started very well against Liverpool, especially as a fan, how nervous I was. I think we started well. I think we invited a bit too much pressure in our in the second half and Mikel Arteta's own admission we lacked a lot of courage in the second half and we gambled too late because ultimately when we did think you know what maybe we can do something against Liverpool Martinelli and Lewis Kelly you know things happened that's football you lost it on the transition when have we been brilliant what are we doing we're making things harder than it needs to be as I said earlier the the, the, the blow is somewhat softened uh, softened by the sense of City losing but how many times are they going to lose a season City can lose as many games as they want. Arsenal Football Club needs to be able to win games. And at this moment in time, again, it's not all doom and gloom. Let's not draw too many conclusions, but it's not been good, has it? It's not been good. Lost to Bournemouth, fair enough, it's happened. Lost to Newcastle, fair enough, it's happened. What's going on? Shaq to the next, did what you needed to do. Second half, we're still talking about things. Whether it's injuries, whether it's Mikel Arteta's tactics, which in my opinion... A, a lot of it is, and obviously the byproduct of what you did or didn't do in the summer, what's going on? And the players, most importantly, because we're all in this together, what's going on? What did we ask? I think Saka did what he could. Other than that, he was dead as well. Martinelli, head down. Havertz was still not creating for him, having to drop into midfield and muck in. I don't think Moreno was bad. You're doing what you can. Rash, you're doing what you can. But it's got to be better from everybody. From everyone, it's got to be better. Too many points are being lost. Too many points. Now, I might sit here in a couple of weeks and say, yeah, we might win the league. But right now, boy, it's one thing City and Liverpool dropping points as well as us. And no one really looking like a front runner at this moment in time. It's another thing, us bucking up our ideas and getting points on the board. It's another thing. You've got Chelsea next. Well, better yet, you've got Inter Milan at San Siro. You've got Chelsea and Maresca's actually getting his act together or getting Chelsea's act together. They're looking all right. Don't feel safe for yourselves. It's happened now. Plenty of things for me to say as a fan in relation to the Newcastle game. But again, I think the biggest testament I can give Newcastle is they did their jobs and they didn't have to be good to be us. Whatever you got to say, if Arsenal were the first, second or third best team in the league based on how we're playing and what the players and Mikel Arteta is doing, Newcastle should be sweating. They should be thinking, bloody hell, how do we get three points? They have to do that. Them kits are clean. They're the best kits. That Them Newcastle players, they're the best kits to give to charity and give to the fans and whatnot. There can't be too much sweat. There cannot be, you know, don't think they had too much to do. And to be honest with you, I'll be amazed if Eddie Howe don't give them boys their the night, the, the night off or to better get training off tomorrow. But it is what it is. You know, it's not been amazing. The players need to buck up their ideas. Arteta need to buck up their ideas as well, because again, what's going on in the midfield in terms of creativity? What's going on for a team that was praised as the best defensive team in the league? And the, let's be honest, there's been so many improvements defensively. Are we playing to those standards? Yes, every goal is uh, avoidable in that. But how many goals have we sat here at this point in the season already and said, you know what, we could have done better there. What's going on there? Because the warning signs have been there. 
We got away with it against Southampton and Leicester. And again, praise the team on one hand for making that happen because life throws you curveballs. But on the other hand, we have not been playing to our high standards. The manager hasn't been managing to those high standards. Need to win the trophy this season. I want to win a trophy as a fan. What trophy that would be, I don't know because, but it is where it is, man. Like, we're in a rut at this moment, regardless of what the points tallies have been saying or we've won, lost or drawn. And we need to get ourselves out of it. It's simple as that. You know where it is? It's happened now. New week's, you know, new week is another, you know, way to kind of change your act. And as I said, the boys are going to need to fix up their ideas against Inter Milan and and, and uh, Chelsea at the weekend. After that, is what it is. Vex. Now again, it's not a doom and gloom thing. I'm not trying to be positive or nothing for no reason or negative for no reason. But at the end of the day, we need to keep perspective. You know, we might look back in May and say, yeah, this is where the league was one loss or drawn, or this is where we could have done better. But at the end of the day, there's still something to salvage. Sentiment can change can change very quickly. Football is quite fickle and fans are quite fickle in that. If you go and beat Inter Milan in certain fashions and Chelsea and you win the next game in the Premier League, whoever is after that, you moved in the right direction. And also another reason why I'm kind of vexed as well, because last season we were very good away from home. What happened there? What happened there? And even with Mikel Arteta, even the subs, man, it's coming like it's not making sense. I'm not going to sit and be a hypocrite. I'm going to watch along and thinking, oh, is he going to gamble with Zinni? Brought Zinni on. It's not looking like Zinni's got a role. It's poor from everyone. We said this against Bournemouth. We said this in elements against Liverpool, where we praised the club on one hand and asked questions on the other. We said this about Shakhtar. We've been saying this through the beginning of the season. So again, we've got to keep perspective. At the end of the day, it's November. There's still a lot to play for. There's still a lot of points on the board. If we feel sorry for ourselves, it gets worse. But on another hand, we need to buck, our, buck up our ideas. And you can't, you, you, you know, beyond blind optimism and maybe what we've done in the last two years and trying to factor in injuries, play, injuries players that are injured coming back and all them kind of positive talking points. There's no way you can look at how we're playing right now and think, yo, third time lucky, the Premier League is landing. At the moment, the only thing I would really say is it's not looking like it's a 90 points thing in the Premier League so far. Now, you can't draw too many conclusions. We're just about getting to the 10 point stage in the Premier League, but uh, 10 game stage. Apologies, people, in the Premier League. This is where teams are starting to shake up and no one's the front runner. I don't think if you ask any club or any manager or any player in the Premier League for that matter, are they at their best? Are they in full flow? No. But at the end of the day, you need to get points on the board. That's all that matters. Context is is for a season. Ironically, you know, it's week to week. All that's going to matter is the cold-hearted evidence on the board. And we're dropping too many points, man. We're dropping too many points. Newcastle, again, take nothing away from them. But it's a feeling of what if. Brighton, even without the whole Declan Rice stuff. What if? Potentially, you know, I'm forcing it. And I don't really believe it. But the City game, definitely the Liverpool game. Because we took the lead twice. Way shooting ourselves in the foot, making things harder than it needs to be. But as I said, this was coming like a therapy session from you lot, people, for from myself, better yet, to you lot. So that's all I've got to say, man. As I said, I've come in at the time, it's, it's 3 38, man. And it's, it's, I've gone through the emotions today. Big up you lot who watched match of the day, but I've gone through the emotions now. Like, yeah, I feel a lot better, man. It is what it is, people. But on that note, you lot, one love. Thank you.